I officially quit Super Ego, bro. They did not pay me. They cheated me, bro, out of all my money. Life with RJ in the building. So, listen, man. My guy sent me your YouTube link when you first started with a controversial company, Super Eagle. And, and we was following what you were saying and what you was doing over there. A lot of people in my background kept asking me. They were saying, like, yo, why don't you hit that RJ dude up? I was going to use one of your videos as one of my commentaries to support your channel. Imagine my surprise to know that you're not no longer with them. And I'm like, <laughs> wait. And I just got finished telling the people that, look, don't reach out to me until you at least have about, I, I don't know, about six months, seven months or something like that. But. Bro, your story that uh, that you told me in the background, I was like, all right, well, let me get you on and you can share your story with the people. The floor is yours, Senator. Okay, okay. Um, Well, I, I actually quit the office to go to Super Ego because I was watching everybody else channel like, oh, man, it can't be that bad. So I drove up 13 hours up from um, Mississippi to Chicago. Orientation, man. Man, when I tell you orientation is like, it's like being in a, honestly. So, you know, I went through orientation. I, I got everything done that day. Got my truck. You know, I had to pay for my own hotel, you know, on my first night. On my second night, you know, they paid for me, but I didn't go to the hotel. I actually went, um slept in the truck. So, you know, I say first two weeks, good, man. And after them two weeks, they just started playing with the money. And, you know, that was keeping me updated. My medical card about to expire. My license about to expire. So I picked up a load out of uh, Florida going to North Carolina. From North Carolina, um, I went to Tennessee. No, from Florida to North Carolina. Then I dropped in North Carolina, picked up another load in North Carolina going to Tennessee. Um, so two drops in uh, Tennessee. Third drop was in Texas. And my last drop was in Nevada. Man, these folks turned my fuel card off. After they turned my fuel card off, they was like, well, you need to leave your trailer in Fort Worth, Texas. Cool. Did that. Mind y'all now. This is a $6,000 load. And I dropped my trailer. They gave me $30. $30 to get from Texas to Mississippi. And they said, that's all we can give you. I'm like, all right, that's cool. I was like, well, you know my license expired, right? Well, um, the only thing I can really tell you is drive the truck home. These folks haven't paid me. I haven't got paid in two weeks. Mind y'all, I'm still employed with Super Ego as we speak. Like, I'm still employed. Man, I done, I done begin threat all that, man. Like, these folks come on when I'm on live on YouTube. They come on there. They threaten me. They're like, they know my whole family. And all this stems behind, I did not sign that contract. If y'all know what the contract is, I did not sign the contract. They offer me a house, motorcycle. They offer me a brand new car. They even said, we will pay you this amount of money every week if you work a night, if you sign this contract, just to put out positive videos. And I told them no. And ever since then, man, it's like I'm black sheep. I'm black sheep. Oh, wait a minute. Hold up. You was lightweight putting out positive videos about them in the beginning. You was doing it regardless of the fact that you didn't sign the contract? And what is this contract now? Because this is something new. This is something new I'm hearing. They offering you guys contracts now to, to put out positive videos? What's up with that? Okay, so the contract is basically if you have a, a outreach to the public, if you have a big outreach and they come across your videos and they see that you have an outreach, they will bring you in. They will sit you down in an office, a private office away from everybody. And they would tell you, hey, um, well, I see that you, you know, you have a big outreach and, you know, you have a lot of people that watch you. We can give you this contract. They'll go over the contract with you. And once you go, man, they'll even give you an 18 wheeler, bro. I ain't, I ain't mention that. But, um, yeah, like if you got an outreach, they'll, they'll get you to sign a contract. And once you sign that, it's basically you selling yourself to this company for them to do this specific thing for you. Certain amount of money. I'm, I'm going to tell y'all. They was offering to pay me four thousand salary. Salary is weekly, right? Yeah, salary. 
they they offered to pay me four thousand if I worked in that new car, new house, motorcycle, and they would give me the truck that I'm in, like completely sign it over to me if I put positive videos out for them. Like no matter the logs, bro. Like they 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 man, you 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 can run illegal, bro. Like if you like, you don't have to do a thirty four hour reset. They will reset some logs for you. Like if you down to your last hour, they that's when they want you to call. Yeah, reset them logs for you and everything, bro. Yeah, we allegedly know that can happen. But let me tell you this, bro, because I just did a story about the young man that was running illegal, allegedly, with another company called Triton. Shows that the driver of the tractor trailer falsified his log books and claims his trucking company, Triton Logistics, showed him how to do it. Meanwhile, the driver of the tractor trailer was 61-year-old Daniel Kramer. He had a valid Class A commercial driver's license out of Alabama. At the time of the crash, Kramer allegedly told state troopers that he and his co-driver originated in St. Louis, and they were headed to a Triton company yard in Chesapeake. Kramer told investigators, I basically repeated what they told me to say, that I had just dropped off my co-driver, which is the same thing that I told that state policeman that night. But there was no co-driver. Kramer was alone. In the NTSB report, he described how Triton's data operations were in Lithuania. Kramer told investigators he could call the offshore data center and they would reset his electronic login data to make it look like he had a second driver with him and wasn't on the road as long as he really was. Which is located out there, by the way. Unfortunately, he was in a major, major accident and it, it caused uh, fatalities. When he let the feds know that the company was allegedly augmenting his laws, when they reached out to the company, they pretty much threw him up under the bus. So there are stories out there and there are stories on this channel that they allegedly does that. But I'm, what I'm just going to say is be careful, man. Be, be careful because if you get into a situation, that company is not going to be behind you. No matter what company you drive for that gives you that opportunity to uh, to do that. So, yeah, like the way Spiegel do it is um, it was a situation that I actually experienced was I was in Colorado and I had got to my drop everything. And they, they called me. They was like, hey, um, Robert, well. I see that you don't have no more time on your clock. Could you make a fake DOL? I said, no, nah, I ain't about to make no fake DOL. They said, well, we will make you a fake DOL to match up with the time that we about to reset for you. But if you get caught, that shit is on you. It's not on us. I said, so a fake DOL. I was like, man, that's crazy, bro. I said, man, I'm not about to do that either. Nah, man, I can't do that. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I believe you on that, man. But you know, when they come when they come to Super Ego Man, I tell everybody, yeah, true enough, true enough, man. I was talking positive at first because I was getting my money. My first week, only two lows, I made 1200 My second week, I had made, well, I was supposed to make uh 3000 but they took all that. They hit me for everything. I walked away with like six. Like six hundred dollars, and after that, they didn't pay me nothing, man. When I tell you nothing, they didn't pay me nothing, bro. It's like the first one's free, the second one you got to pay for it. Yeah, exactly, exactly, man. <laughs> they say, "Will you?" Be like, "Yo, man, I really need it." Okay, I, I got you. Just remember, the first one's free, and the second one you're gonna have to pay for. <laughs> so they came back and took all they shit out of that check, huh? Man, everything like my my overhead expenses for that whole week was right at twenty five hundred dollars. Wow! All right, so let's let's rewind it back, man. Let's rewind it back. So you you came from the oil fields. Now I I, I talked to a few people that had some experience in the oil fields as well. Sometimes the oil fields is up. Sometimes the oil fields is down. And when it's down. It's down. You know what I'm saying. Yeah. So yeah. it's it's it works both ways. When it's up, it's up. But when it's yep. down, it's down. I, yep. I talked to a few people that actually drove for Super Ego uh. and and kind of like drove their trucks down to Texas, Louisiana, where the oil fields is at. They would they will park their truck. They didn't have no problems 
was Super Ego per se. They just used Super Ego as a backup plan. Like when the oil fields is down, you're gonna need a backup plan. And basically that's what they was using Super Ego for. Like if they get down there and they'd be like, yo, it ain't no work, yada, yada, yada. Hey, no problem. I got my Super Ego truck right here. I got you. So right. they, that's how they did it. But you came from the oil fields and, and you just said when we started our conversation that you couldn't believe all of the ongoings that was being said about controversial company Super Eagle. Same thing with the young lady. I just spotlighted her this past couple of days. She said the same thing. She said she don't want to go in listening to what everybody had to say about the company. I got to come and find out for myself. So, right. So what about you, man? Like you, what made, what made you give them the benefit of the doubt? The reason I gave them, you know, the reason I actually went to them because, you know, like I had said, bro, I was watching everybody else's videos. You know, I seen the good and I seen the bad. But as I was watching the other people's videos, I'm like, they saying they ain't making no money. Okay, you idling your truck. You know, you you going home, you doing this, you doing that. And I'm like, nah, it's got to be something else to it that they doing wrong. Mind you, like, my wife, she work in the accounting departments and all that. Like, she good with numbers. You know, I'm just a driver. So, previous, like, a year or two ago, I was lease purchasing, and my truck note was 10 times higher than Super Egos. My overhead period was higher. I was still banking good money. So, I'm like, man, my truck note's low. Like, I'm good. I know I can make the bread. So, what made me come to them was to see for myself. And when I tell you, man, the worst experience I ever had since I've been driving trucks, I left the oil field because the guy wasn't paying me. He was making me pay for the fuel as a company driver. I'm like, nah, that's not that's not cool. So that's why I left the oil field, came to them. You know, they like when I first got the Super Ego, like they was just basically like I was just like the, the rock at the bottom of the bag. They didn't nothing, bro. And I'm telling you. When they figure out that I did YouTube videos, man, like they started calling me, oh man, we got your back, this and that, basically buttering me up, bro. And then they hit me with that contract. And I was like, what the hell that? Not me? I never do that, man. No, nah, not for no money, bro. No, it's not, it's not worth it. But I mean, and for everybody who watched this video, if y'all think about going to Super Ego, it's one person that work in Super Ego, that never, ever, ever go home. And he signed that contract, bro. He never go home. He got all brand new cars. The same cars he got, they offered it to me. How you work in the office, but you still making truck driver pay? Come on now. Come on now, bro. Are you going to be ready for the backlash? Oh, I'm ready for everything. I mean, hey. I got receipts on everything, man, on everything. All right, so now now that this contract thing now, like, ah, man, th this contract thing changes the whole aspect of these drivers that's putting out positive videos, positive promos and stuff like that. Now for a new driver that's interested in coming over the controversial company, Super Eagle, and they come across those videos, I, I don't know if they can put any type of validation in there now because they actually are getting paid to put out positive videos. Don't get me wrong. Look, I, I was putting out positive videos when I was with J&R Shrugal, but I really liked it, the company, and I was putting out positive videos before they even got wind of it. After they got wind of it, then they came to me and they was like, yo, hey, we could pay you. So, but Man. but that was because I actually liked it, JNR Shrugal. And to this very day, I still don't have no problem with JNR Shrugal, despite what happened to me. But I still don't have no problem with JNR Shrugal. But yeah, they when they was paying me, I was being paid because I liked it. But now I don't know, man. How can how can people take validation in these quote unquote positive videos that's on Instagram, that's that's on YouTube and stuff like that, man? I mean, I don't know, bro, but that's what they offer me. And you know, I mean honestly, honestly they even let me I, when I was in Colorado, they let me drive with an expired uh medical car. They they knowing, they knowing it. And it was like a week before I even went and got my medical card. You know what I'm saying? So 
Yeah, true enough. Don't get me wrong. Super Ego was good at first. They, they, you know, they was good at first. And then after you turn down their offer, then they basically blackball you, bro. You know, and I mean, like I said on my lives, bro, like they even, and I had a dude come in. I thought he was a troll at first. Dude came in and said my mom name, birthday, street that I, I grew up on. They said all the cars my dad had in his name. And I'm like, well, how do you know this, man? Oh, we was hired by Super Ego to track you down. And I went on Reddit and looked at, uh, you know, what they call the uh, the people who the brokers. You know, the brokers got like this little private page and they invited me to it. Man, when I went on there and seen the background of Super Ego, how they actually started and what they done did in the offices, bro, I'm sitting in a truck, bro. I mean, I tell you, my heart like stopped. I was like, oh, man. And another guy, you know, that I was impatient with, he told me. Once he got his truck, and if you don't have no fuel in your truck, they'll give you another fuel car to go put a dollar in. They followed him, his wife, and his baby to the uh, pilot, and they act like, you know, they was just going up there. They followed him, went in the bathroom with him, followed him, and followed him all the way back to Super Ego Terminal, his truck in. He was like, man, these folks following me, man. I don't know what they are part of, what they is, but they, they, they following me now. I'm like, oh man, but if man, I can I can send it to you, bro. Like the history of Super Ego and how they started and what they stand for and what they'll do to you, man, bro. You'll be like, ain't no way, man. So RJ, man, RJ, yeah. it's like I've been saying for the past couple of videos that a lot of people go in, get with Super Ego, get their experience with them. They have a they have an inkling on what Super Ego is about. They check it out. One, two, three, they're done. They're going to come out and make a couple of videos about their experience. And then either I get wind of it or they reach out to me to come on and tell their story. What is the reason? Like, come on, RJ. What, what is what, what is the reason why you reached out to me to, to tell your story? Because the people is gonna the people is gonna come after you in the comment section. I'm I'm just gonna let you that. The reason for me, you know, basically reaching out and to tell my story is because don't make the mistake that I made for not listening to what everybody else said, man. It's good at first, and then it get bad in the end, you know? And I wanted y'all to know that I came in with a plan, open mind, everything, that I was going to pay this truck off and run under my own authority. And it, di it didn't work out like that. Mind y'all, I'm running. I only went home like twice since I was with them. I'm out here running, running, running. But they still off the top. They most definitely still off the top. The rate, you know, the rate is not right. You don't get an official rate con, none of that, you know. And I just want y'all to know, bro, if y'all see bad videos, man, piece it all together. If you piece it all together, it all falls back to you not getting paid. They going to fire you for nothing. All that, man. Like, trust me on this. I'm, 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 the, I'm the type, bro, to where... I just don't get with a company just quit just because you have to realize mess me over. Man. And they really messed me over. They messed me over, bro. Like left me basically stranded. And then they'll threaten you whenever you don't answer their phone calls and say they found your family and all this, bro. And they going to hire somebody to find them. But yeah, that was the reason I reached out to you, man, to let them know, like, man, it's true. Like people, people even told me, man, you need to leave that company while you can. You need to leave. And I'm like, nah, man, I'm good over here, bro. You know, some you know, Walmart when they when Walmart started, bro, they had their bad times, you know, so this part of running a business, man, man, it messed me up. No nobody didn't nobody didn't tell you about it when you first got there, like, hey bro, turn it turn around. Turn her turn around. Because I know I talked to a nope. few drivers when they walked through that front door and they seen some seen some people coming out and they was like, Hey bro, giving them the chop, the chop sign up under their neck. Good <laughs> job, like, <laughs> hey, bro, hey, like the one person told me, they was like, I don't get hand gestures, but I'm like, bro, if they give you the chops, I mean, there's something going on. But then nobody tell me nothing. Then nobody tell me nothing. It was all love, all good. You going to make your money. And then they even have one person up there to where who actually paid his truck off, you know, talking good, man. And I'm like, oh, well, if he can do it, I can do it. Man, it, it wasn't that. It was all good, man. They, they're a good company. They're going to take care of you. 
Yeah, they're going to take care of you, all right? Make sure you get back home. You know, I mean, I wasn't even tripping on to, I had to pay my own way. I wasn't even tripping on that because I was going to drive anyway. You know, but stay away from super ego, y'all. I'm telling y'all. Trust me on it. Away. Stay away. Man, so you said it was just all good just a week ago. All right, man, so. Basically, yeah. So you get up in there, you get the truck, you sign. Now, unfortunately for the young lady, her situation was she signed the lease without seeing the truck first. So was you able to see the truck that you was going to get or that you was going to be in before you signed the lease? How did how did that work out for you? OK, um, the truck is the first thing you get. If they have the truck that you want on the yard, the truck will be the first thing you get. I told them I wanted anything but an international Volvo. So they wanted me to fly to Maryland at first. I was like, no, I can't fly. I got my wife with me, then my car up here too. They said, hold on, hold on. I see a guy coming in to turn his truck in. And I asked him, like, what he turn his truck in for? Oh, no, no, no. He just got something he got to handle. I was like, all right, cool. So he showed me the truck, you know. I looked at the truck. I said, oh, I need a new bumper, mirror, and I need a PM done. They did it. They ordered the bumper that day. The bumper came in that morning. So, yeah, I actually seen my truck before I signed the paper. You're going to always see the truck when you sign the paper. Yeah, Even but, if you're going to recover the truck. Yeah, but you, wait, wait. It wasn't no alarm bells ringing in your head when he told you that somebody was bringing the truck in? Like, I don't know, bro. I mean, you're a controversial company, Super Eagle. They could be bringing in that truck for a whole bunch of reasons, man. I don't know. <laughs> it wasn't no alarm bells ringing in that head of yours, man, when he told you that. I mean, I mean, you gotta, I mean, you gotta look at it the way I looked at it. Man, I done drove, I done drove thirteen hours up here with only four hundred dollars in my pocket. Don't got no money to make it back. The shot up here going on two, three days, it's like, man, nah, this not about to be no blank trip. Oh, no. So after that, I was just like, hey, I'm leaving here with a truck today. I'm leaving here with a truck, man. So that right there was just in my head. And I was like, hey, mm -hmm. yeah, dude is. He doesn't turn the truck in. So I am just saying that. Although that would have been like some multiple questions in my head as the reason why. Not not the fact that he turned it in. That gave you the opportunity to go out there, look at it, get some of the stuff that was that needed to be taken care of on it. But the fact that he brought it back up there is the question like, hey bro, hey my man, come here right quick. Hey, 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 come here. Let me talk to you right quick, man. Hey. Hey, uh, yo, is there a particular reason? Because they saying that you brought the truck up for this reason. What's your reason for bringing back the truck, bro? Oh, they they, they wouldn't even let me talk to him. The, the the yard manager, he was basically standing by this dude like a security guard, man. And whenever whoever it was that pulled in to pick him up, the yard manager opened the car door for him to get in. Wouldn't let the man even look at me, bro. So it was no way I could say something to him because the yard manager was standing right there. By and then at that point, I'm like, dang, man. So, you know, maybe he just coming home for personal reasons or something. See, it never clicked in my head that why he guarding this dude like that. Now that you bring it up and I'm thinking about it, yeah, bro. Man. That's some serious cop blocking right there, bro. <laughs> <laughs> hey, for real. Wow. All right, man. So... You already said a couple of weeks was good, and then it started going downhill. After it went downhill, was you still trying to give them, continue to rock out with them? Maybe it was just a slow point or something like that. You you were still trying to trying to rock out with them. What what make what was the last straw for you? The last straw for me was Friday. They gave a random driver who picked up my trailer that I'm paying notes on. Three no thirty five hundred dollars out of that load. They gave them thirty five hundred dollars to drop off one forklift from Texas to Nevada. One forklift in the trailer, thirty five hundred dollars, bro, and put me in a negative like four hundred and forty eight dollars again for the second week in a row. That right there, and then on top of the person that's stalking me right now from Super Ego, them two things right there it was like, man, I got to get away. Y'all can have y'all truck. Mind y'all, the safety just called me today, asking me, when am I coming back to work? I said, I'm not. I quit. Well, why did you quit, Rob? What you mean why I quit? Y'all didn't pay me. 
well, who did you talk to? Nobody but my recruiter. What did he say? He said he was going to get my money and block me. So that right there was like, yeah, man, I don't know what they own or what they trying to do. But I'm, I'm, you know, whatever come with, come with it, you know. So where's the truck at now? Oh, the truck down here with me. Okay. You got plans on taking them their truck bag, right? No, they didn't have plans on paying me. Okay. Okay. It just is here, right? They didn't think they... They didn't think about me when they paid everybody. Well, I'm guessing they paid everybody else. They wasn't thinking about me. Why would I think about giving them their truck? Oh, y'all want to put an abandonment on me? Go do what y'all got to do, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I, I accept that abandonment. I will. I will accept that, you know, because, I mean, you know, I, and, and another thing I want to throw out. This is why I say don't come to Super Ego. It's the owner-operator who worked for Super Ego, leased to Super Ego. They owe him 3500 I have to text him. So he texts me. He said, man, you know, these folks ain't even paid me. I said, they ain't paid me either, bro. Join the club. I said, how much they owe you? Man, they owe me, I think he said, $3,500. But you know what? I got, you know, all this and that, bro. So if they, man, the only people they care about, the only way I see you will actually win at Super Ego if you're a company driver, which I don't know how the company driver works. You, you know, you got to be a company driver. Zero experience. Well, I, I I don't know if there's any company drivers with a Super Eagle. I talked to a few that was company drivers at one time, but like unless you're like a recovery driver, then yeah, mm -hmm. because there's a lot of trucks out there that uh, you guys are leaving out there. And these recovery drivers, they're making a little bit of bank by going to pick them boys up. <laughs> <laughs> but but I, I i i feel you man companies need to stop messing with drivers money and i'm a i'm a big advocate of if i sign the contract to run for you then i want to get paid after i take care of that business for you that's what i'm here for you got people shooting out all kinds of positive videos about how much you can make and you got your ads running and making everything look all look all gravy over here despite of the negativity that's out there surrounding you exactly. drivers are still giving you guys the benefit of the doubt like 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 what you just said bro you and the young lady that i spotlighted both of y'all pretty much said the same thing look i'm just gonna go here and find out for myself and and you come to find out that that it is true so with all that going on you would think that they would change up some kind of way so yeah man I, I feel you guys and again i'm hey me i'm i'm here for the story the change of like you know a lot of people don't want to work with super ego for the low wise and that's why like people ask me well why do they have so many um different names so super ego is the holding company so they got tri time jordan you know they got timeless i think they got all kinds the reason they don't want to, the, the reason people don't want to work with certain ones, if they see super ego on the side, man, they is not going to mess with you at all. I even talked to some brokers behind super ego back, you know, and they said, well, it's hard to keep up with them because they open up a new company name when one gets shut down. You feel what I'm saying? Like that right there was a, you know, started, I started doing my research after I talked to that broker and they told me that. So like, bro, when they, when they come, when they come to Super Ego, man, I'm telling y'all once again, don't come, please don't come, man. I will go drive for Swift before I go back for Super Ego, man. Mind you, Swift ain't a bad company, but I'll go drive for them. Yeah, Swift is offering lease purchase program now they have a they have a fine looking female that's that's promoting that on tape type but all you just hear is the charlie brown teacher talking when when she talks when you look at her hey guys this here with swift transportation i am just hopping on here to let you guys know a little bit of what <laughs> But bro, you just mentioned Super Ego is a holding company. So which one of the uh, affiliates that you was driving up under? I was driving up under Jordan. Turn right 
And that's where you, that's where the paychecks was coming from as well? No, the paychecks were coming through Floor Inc. Your paychecks and your fuel are going to be linked to Floor Inc., which is another company other people drive for. So, you know, it got me thinking. I wonder, do the people that drive for Floyd get paid under Jordan or pump their fuel under uh, Jordan? You know what I'm saying? It, it don't make sense. Nothing have super ego name on it but the trailers. Okay, 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 Jordan. All right, so the fuel card, once you get a load, they'll turn the fuel card off until you get the next load. Did you, by chance, fuel up the tank before they turned the card off? Or or are you sit, or is the truck over there sitting on E? No, I actually fueled up the truck. Like, I topped it all the way off. But by the time I made it to my delivery in Texas, I was a little bit up under half a tank. So um, they turned the fuel card off after I filled up that one time. And I asked them about it. I'm like, I'll turn my fuel card off. Oh, no, the fuel card automatically go off. I said, no, it don't. It only go off when you're not under a load. So what is it? Oh, well, let me call you right back. All right, cool. They called me back. Well, um, the fuel department only authorized you to get $30. I said, why? That'll take you 16 miles. All right, cool. So... Uh, then, and then they wanted me to send a picture of the dashboard, which the dashboard, it, like the fuel gauge, it was almost on a half a tank. So I found another picture that I had with it sit like dead on E. And that's how they gave me that 30. So they would have seen me have a fuel up in it. No, nah, I wouldn't have made it on. But, you know, it's still, I still don't get it. If y'all knew my license was expiring on the 17th, why, why y'all continue to let me run, man? I, I just don't get it. I, you know, it never registered with me with that. Well, here, so, then, here's here's the thing with that, RJ. Here, here's the thing with that. All right, now, now, here you go. Check it out. See if you can catch this. They know that your situations. They know. They know the situations, but they get they put it on you, not them. Don't don't inspect them to to be in your corner for anything, bro. It's gonna be on you. Yeah, we know you. Your your license is expired. Go and go ahead and drive and get that load to the to the receiver for us. We got you. We got your back. But as soon as you get pulled over, bro, because you accepted that that your license is expiring, that your license is expired. But you accepted that, my guy. It's for them. Yeah, they know. And yeah. Oh, yeah. We we need you to we need to we we just need you to get that load there for us so we can get so we can get our money. Our money. They want to make sure they get their money. They want to make sure of that. So yeah, if you need some time on your clock, let us know well, how much time you need on your clock, sir. Man, I need about another 10. I need about another 10, 34. How you want to do it? Yeah. Just go ahead and we, we got you covered. Just just go ahead and get that load so that we can get paid. But as soon as you get in any trouble because you driving illegal because your license is about to expire or expired, or mm -hmm. if that clock, if you get messed up or something like that, you're going to be ended up like that dude over here talking about, hey, uh, well, I just dropped my imaginary co-worker off. <laughs> I'm just we I'm I'm on my way to the yard and the yard is in Chicago and you all the way down in Texas, bro. Right. What yard you <laughs> going to? Exactly. So you guys accept it. And that's why I'm saying that the, the, the guys that's that's winning was super ego. A few probably might come out and speak about their experience, but I don't think they're gonna come out and speak about their experience while they're still there, winning, doing what they're doing. Maybe, maybe, maybe down the line we'll hear somebody that been there for like 10, 15 years and then be like, boom, something happened and then they'll come out and share their story. But as of right now, they accept it. They accept it, yeah, bro. Right. So yeah, just be careful of, I mean, look, I, hey, somebody asked me what I think about controversial company Super Eagle. Look, I'm just going to tell you like everybody else do. If, if, you, if you already seen the videos and you still want to give them the benefit of the doubt, then that's all I can say. Just find out, find out for yourself. Come, just come to me six months later. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, yeah. so I'm not going to stop y'all, but 
But I'm just saying, they know, bro. They knew your license was going to be suspended, not suspended, but expired or expiring. So, but they say, hey, go ahead and drive our truck. Don't, don't worry about it. Go ahead and just drop that load off because we can't have you driving our load because you did mention that you had to drop the trailer to go home. So probably might be a tick in the matrix right there by saying, yeah, if you get caught with our load, that's going to be an issue. So yeah, drop the load. We'll still pay you, but we'll, you, you, don't worry about it. Go in and drive our truck. And right. <laughs> what I'm saying, yeah, don't, don't worry about it because see, if you get caught with our load, then that's going to be a problem for us. But if you just get caught in the truck, then that's on you. You know, yeah. so yeah, just oh, if you dude. if you accept it, just accept accountability for it. That's all. Yeah, and like when it come to the load, I'm gonna let y'all know, man. Don't go on them load boards. You, you allowed to run on three load boards, you know. So don't go on the load board and find the best loads. Yes, you're gonna be looking for the best loads, but I'm telling y'all, it's all friend. Like they have they certain ones that they friends with. Like me, I found the seven thousand dollar load coming out of Florida going up to New York. I sent them that load and said, I want this load right here. They turned around and told me, oh, the load gone. Mind you now, the dude that he gave the load to was my friend, bro. My Like a dude that I know. So you will send them good loads, they'll turn around and give them loads to their friends. And I found out about it because he called me. He was like, bro, I just got a $7,000 load. I'm like, where is it going? He told me, I was like, bro, I found that load, man. I said, what broker is it? Oh, it's with C.H. Robinson. I was like, bro, that was my load, man. So they, I'm telling you, they will, they will give them good loads to the ones that they want to have it or they like. So, hey, don't book them loads either, man. I tell you. Like, it's so much shady stuff going on there. All right. So, again, you said safety reached back out to you and I asked you if and when you was coming back. But you already told them, nah, I'm good. Until you guys pay me, I'll bring you your truck back. So, RJ, man, what, what will be the what will be the moral moral of your story, man? Because, like I said, this is intriguing to find out a lot more stuff with the company. I learn a little bit more about this company every day. I will honestly, man. I will tell y'all, please not come. I'm man, I can't stress that enough. Do not come over here. The first two weeks will be good. After that, they're going to start playing with your money. If y'all want to be broke, and you know, come on. That's cool. Come on. If y'all don't like money, come on over here. But don't come, man. I'm telling y'all. I'm telling y'all, man. Like, I, man, I, I don't I don't lost some stuff from being over here. Just in the little time I was here. Bro, I don't, I don't lost, you know, I'm trying to get back on my feet. Don't come over here, bro. Please. Don't. Don't. They, I mean, they got a lawsuit on them now. Not from me, but people telling me they got a lawsuit on them now. Don't come over here. I'm trying to tell you. Yeah, there's a lot of speculations with the Super Eagle lawsuit. We don't know because we're hearing from multiple sources. Allegedly, once again, let me just say allegedly that Super Eagle won. They didn't win. They, I, I even talked to one of their ARs, aka recruiters. And she told me that because of the lawsuit, they was able to get better brokers. Better brokers offer offer you guys instead of 88%, they offer you 75%. And in that conversation I had with her, I'm like, wait, the math ain't math. How, how are they going to make more money at 75% versus 88% what they was getting before? She, she explained it. I I still didn't get it, but it is what it is. But but yeah, as far as that lawsuit goes, I, I I don't know until I actually see in black and white if it's a clear winner in in that, then I will probably say something about it. But yeah, we already know that there's a lawsuit going on. There's multiple drivers that are a part of that lawsuit. I, I spoke to one driver that is a part of that lawsuit, and he he says that they that. 
they still in litigations, so they he don't he he don't know when it's going to be a a clear ending of that. But but again, controversial company Super Eagle. They hey, they must be doing something right because you guys are still giving them the benefit of the doubt, and they still they still in business. So I turned them people down four times before I said I'm gonna try it out. Like they were begging me to come work for them, and I dumb enough to go and do it but it's a life learning experience too for me that it look good is not good man i need to listen i need to if i mean and my people even told me too like man if you see more than one bad video why would you still go i said i just gotta find out for myself i got to and bro they had me over here like man do i really know how to count you know they had me questioning myself so don't come over here y'all Please don't come over there. So before you said that you was a lease op before you even got over there, so you pretty much had an understanding on how to run the truck versus the inexperienced people that comes up in there that don't know how to run the truck. So yeah, what what happened to you in the past with your with your past experience with leasing? Well, I had I had ten trucks. Now I was lease purchasing, like I still making good money. Like the company was making good money, but come to find out, this one guy he was putting the he was a pastor, he was a you know trustworthy person, and come to find out that he did not own the. Company. He was like putting this uh, thing on to where he was a pastor, trustworthy, and the guy that's overseas invested his money into that company. And he was basically what they call, I, I guess it's called money laundering. So he was trying to sell trucks that wasn't even his. And he ended up firing me, leaving me in Louisiana. And, you know, he lost his insurance, but he was still running his trucks with a fake insurance. And a guy that came and worked for him with no CDL had an accident going down the mountain, Donner Pass. He was going down Donner Pass with a beer load and, you know, had a wreck. He got paralyzed and they, you know, got all, you know, after that, you know, definitely come out to whoever was operating that company. I ended up. Wait, is this the same company that you just mentioned about having 10 trucks with? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was buying 10 trucks from them and it wasn't even... It wasn't even uh, what I thought it was going to be. I thought I was going to own these trucks. He okay. didn't even own them trucks. Okay, RJ, you somebody going to come in the comment section and say cap on that. So reiterate yeah, on yeah. how how you was getting 10 trucks with, did you have drivers in them? Like, come on. Yeah, man. yeah, I had drivers. And the, the way I did the drivers was, because I know they probably going to ask, well, how did he find 10 drivers? Right. Craigslist, man. Right? Craigslist. I posted an ad on Craigslist looking for drivers. And the guy that I knew, you know, I ain't gonna say his name, but he was basically the dispatcher recruiter. You know, I asked him, hey man, can I get more than one truck with y'all? He said, cool. So he let, he said, but we're not gonna give you the truck until you have a driver to go in that truck. So I posted an ad on Craigslist. People was calling me. He was like, tell me to tell them to send the license to you. You send it to me. I run them. The insurance approve them. We'll bring them in. And that's what I was doing. So, but it wasn't a back to back, you know, I have my truck I was running. I get another truck running for a month and let that truck be a revenue. And then once I see that, you know, I can pay these guys, I bring another one, you know, and then I did it like that. So if you don't mind my asking, how how much are we looking at for, for per truck a week, bro? Like that must be a lot of, a lot of, a lot of money on the overhead for, for 10 trucks, man. Yeah, the trucks were number three fifty a week. You know, that was older. They weren't no new trucks. There was older internationals and uh freightliners. Okay, okay. All right. All right. Well, three hundred plus other expenses. Okay, okay. I, I I can see. I, I could see. You getting good freight and everything. How was you paying the drivers? Was you paying them by percentage or was you paying them CPM? Yeah, I was paying a percentage and then it was all dedicated work through uh Yokohama Tires. So we was running the tire account. So, you know, it was steady work, steady freight, you know, dropping hooks. And then it all went down south when, when the dude was caught for money laundering and all sorts of stuff after that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay. And okay. I love that. I love that company. I was good with them. But 
Everything that look good is not good for you. All right. So, RJ, man, again, thank you for coming on and sharing your story, man. So what's next for you, man? Uh, you're, what, back in Texas, right? So what's what's next for you, man? You you gonna give Leeson another shot, or are you gonna try and get dedicated? What's what's next for you? Um, I'm actually gonna start doing the YouTube full time. You know, do DoorDash. You know, make me a little money here and there, and do the YouTube full time, man. Like you know, which I'm you know I'm gonna keep my CDL just for a backup plan if something don't work out. But I'm giving the YouTube, you know, full time. All right. RJ, there's there's no money in YouTube, bro. I'm 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 just saying. I I mean, do what you want to do, but when I hear truck drivers, because a lot of truck drivers out here love to jump on social media, and then they start seeing that little bit of YouTube or TikTok checks, they think they could just go full time, bro. Let me tell you, the let me tell you the kicker to that. The truck is is your content don't let listen listen i'm just i'm on the outside looking in and i've seen a lot of youtubers in the past that was truck drivers tried to do the youtube thing without the truck if the truck isn't part of your content then a lot of people is not going to be interested there was a youtuber that was a trucker he tried working i, I don't know what it was cleaning a truck or or whatever the case and he got back in the truck because of the the following fell off females is gonna win anyway because they're females we we gonna watch regardless if they're in the truck or not we they females but as far as as far as male trucker goes i'm much success to you and i'm not going to try and talk you out of it but i'm just saying that the truck is the content so if you started off your youtube in the truck and then try to flip it it's going to be a minute, but much success to you because there's a guy, a YouTuber. He he was 100 with Prime back in the day. Like, like he was Prime super fan or super guy. And then something happened with Prime. And then after that, he went to do YouTube full time. It took him a minute, but he, got to, he had to transition and get a whole new following. But he, he managed it because now all he does is DoorDash. What's that? Cart, Instacart, uh, Goober, or what, what, what is what's a Grubhub? Yeah, he does all he does all of that along with the YouTube content. But it did take him a little minute, bro. Shout out to Crazy Bags. That's the YouTuber. If you want to go over there and check him out. But it, it took him yeah, a little, it took him a little minute to transition everything. But he he he's managing so. I'm not going to say it's impossible, you know what I'm saying? But I'm just saying, trying to do YouTube full-time without the truck, it just lets you got some work ahead of you. Okay. I, I, I do appreciate that. No doubt. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I said, I'm going I'm to a, I'm a try. I'm going to try, man. I want you to keep up, too, bro. I got you, man. man. I got you. I'm, all, I'm already subscribed to you, man. If, if I'm not, I'll make sure I'll do it today. So I really do appreciate you coming on, man, sharing your story, man. RJ, much success to you and everything, man. And hopefully we come back together again on some future endeavors. Oh, yeah, most definitely, bro. You already know he is. Big G's got it locked, boy. Want you to love me all night, yeah, take me down. Want you to make me real wet, yeah, swim around. Want you to take it like a G, yeah, don't make a sound.